Okay, I'm glad to see some dedicated Bell fans in the audience. So, um, as Maria had mentioned, uh, I will talk about um, Bell for network reconstruction. So, and um, as Kiss has introduced me, I am from Clarabait Analytics, former, formerly Thomson Reuters IP and Sciences. And at the Clarabait Analytics, we speak Bell. It's one of our languages. We are very fluent in Bell. And Julia will talk about one of our projects. Um, so, and I will talk about some project that, uh, a project that I was working on when uh, in my pre clarify time. So open Bell as a citizen scientist tool for network reconstruction. Uh, Keith likes to bring up this uh, proverbial citizen scientist that can use Transmart to do some discoveries in the leisure of free time and uh, Bell can also be such a tool for citizen scientists to build some networks on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> to also make some discoveries. So I will um, use an example of crowdsourcing biological network verification and, and um, extension um, for, to illustrate how Bell can be used for these purposes, and I will talk about the framework, structure, the outcome, rewards, and challenges of using Bell. Uh, so the Bell structure, you probably seen this slide. Um, I got it from from the paper, and um, I haven't been to the net uh, to the um, workshop, and, and you probably discussed this in the workshop, so I'm not going to go over that. And I have a bell statement, and you have probably seen a number of bell statements. But uh, the point here is that with bell you can read literature and you can um, construct your bell statements, and and then um, you take your bell statements, you make um, your networks. So, and um, there is a great resource, um, the Bell portal, where you can um, find everything you need to get started um, to use Bell in your lab. So, now we are getting to the Bell for crowdsourcing. So, why Bell? Um, and I'm sure you have heard it also number of times that it's human readable and, compa and computable. So because it's human readable, it makes it an attractive uh, tool for uh, crowdsourcing. And it has been used for crowdsourcing pretty successfully in the network verification challenge. And the goal of this network verification challenge is to use a crowd to verify a network that were already built and to extend those networks. So if um, you think that the pink one is a uh, Hello Kitty and uh, the butterfly is a butterfly, you probably have been living off-grid for the past year. So this is, these are Pokemons. The Meow, the pink one, is a very rare Pokemon. Uh, the Butterfree is a pretty common Pokemon. And... Uh, the reason I'm using this to Pokemon is to, to Pokemon is to illustrate why Bell is for crowdsourcing. So it's very um, difficult to find a biomedical expert um, that has advanced programming skills and can take literature and program networks out of it. But it's not that difficult to find a subject matter expert that can actually learn Bell, who, who is willing and who can invest a couple of hours of their free time to learn basics of Bell and just get started. That's what I've been doing on this network verification challenge. I was appointed an ambassador of Bell. Um, Dexter was also mentioning someone in his organization that he wants to be to, to have a role of a evangelist. Yes, that was my role. I was an ambassador, and my job was to recruit people and to train them. Initially, 
we have tried different uh, approaches. It was advertised, it was published, and, and there were some um, also training uh, offered and, and seminars, but um, the most effective way to recruit people was to contact them through the networks one-on-one -on -one and spend like uh, a couple of hours uh, just going through Bell and training them and, and making sure that they know how to use it. And once they feel confident that they can use the Bell, then they were willing to join the, uh, this network verification challenge and, and they were hooked on it. But any crowdsourcing project has a specific elements. Um, you have to have a customer, organizer, then there is a problem, platform, target crowd, motivators. In this project, in this crowdsourcing project, we had an additional element, Bell support experts. Uh, so the organizers was um, Philip Morris International, Systems Toxicology, and the funding came from Philip Morris International. The problem goal was to verify and enhance pulmonary biological networks, um, basically to create a set of networks that were peer-reviewed and verified by the experts. The platform was a open bell and uh, bionet, uh, built by Anselmo that uh, Dexter also mentioned. Uh, it's a small world. Everyone knows everyone within bell community. Target crowd. The target crowd, it took a little bit of um, trial and errors to um, find the target crowd. Initial crowd that uh, this was kind of marketed to was a uh, bioinformaticist and um, you know, systems biologist, um, more of a, a kind of a technical variety. And uh, in, in this trial uh, and, and error, we have discovered that that's not our target crowd. We need people who are experts in the field more than we need people who are experts in the uh, technical aspects of coding. So that's why Bell is great, because you can teach the experts uh, to code. And there were also motivators, um, trip to meetings, publications, there was gaming element. We had people that were addicted and they were waking up five in the morning to just make some um, you know, vote for uh, for some um, edges and nodes and verify some networks and people actually reported it to us. Then people wanted to learn new skills and, and there was also reputation. People were earning uh, points and other scientists were voting for the evidence that they were submitting. So in a nutshell, this is how it looked. Uh, so first there were um, scientists from PMI and Solventa that built initial networks based on the literature and experimental results. And then these 50 networks were posted on the website of Bionet uh, that uh, Maja already have shown. So, and these 50 networks uh, were submitted for crowd verification. <coughs> And then after that, there was also review of the submitted evidence and then network Jamboree. Um, Jamboree, I had to actually Google the Jamboree the first time I heard about it. And, and it, it's uh, something about celebration. So celebration of the hard work that has been done by the crowd. I think it's a good wor word for it. Uh, uh, a meeting would be kind of boring, but it was a Jamboree. And then after that, uh, the networks were posted uh, on the platform, and they are available now, and I will show where they are. Um, so the customer was um, Philip Morris, and they, were, they funded this. Okay. Bionet platform. Uh, the Bionet platform, um, I can actually show show the Binet platform. You've, you've seen the screenshot, so I think I'll just show it because it's still there. Um, it was not taken down. The challenge has been completed. So that the Binet platform is there and uh, um, maybe there will be another challenge. Maybe there will be another round. There were, there were two rounds and at the second round, at the Jamboree for the second round, I know people were coming to Julie and asking her whether or not there will be a third round because everyone just loved it. 
So uh, the platform had um, uh, the, the networks that people were selecting to verify. So that is a, a, you can select node edge, you can um, edit it, you can add another evidence to it. Uh, then uh, there was an activity um, stream, live stream. Anyone who adds a new edge, new evidence, or votes for edge uh, evidence, you, um, you can see it right away. And then other scientists can go and they can look at what has been added and they can also vote up or down, uh, whatever evidence or network or uh, whatever evidence edge or node was added. And people were ranked. So there is overall ranking, user current challenge, which was the second challenge ranking. Um, so it, it was fun. The motivators as another um, component of every crowdsourcing uh, project. So as I have mentioned, earning points, ranking, gaming elements, the learning bell. In addition to one-on-one -on -one trainings, there are also available um, recorded, uh, actually, training sessions. And this is still on the network verification challenge on the improver website. All this training and I think it may be, it might be useful to put a link uh, to this if, if we're going to have uh, the foundation wiki for the bell, a link to this training would be very useful because they're very good, they're short trainings and they explain the basics, elements and how you can create models with bell. So the great resources um, professionally recorded uh, I think was was paid actors. I, I don't know who you hired, but yeah, they have a, a very good, um, I think, British accents. <laughs> really good sounding. Okay. So I think we should should be reusing that. Okay. Um, the crowd. So this is the map um, of the of the crowd. So uh, the map was also um, dynamically updated every time a new um, new person, new scientist joined this uh, challenge. Uh, the map is updated. So the th overall there was 323 participants in two rounds of this session and they were from everywhere. So there, there were, uh, of course, there were a lot of people from the United States. There were people, uh, a lot of people from Spain and there are people from Russia so and, and from a number of other countries. So I think 23 countries altogether that have participated. Okay. I think I have some summary here. So, so the, as I said, there were two phases of this. There were um, phase one and phase two. And overall, uh, there were um, this many votes, uh, two and a half thousand votes for different pieces of evidence, up or down. People were voting for, for the evidence indicating whether or not they believe the evidence that supports a, an edge or they don't believe it. And if they don't believe it, they would give a reason. Like it was not the right cell type, maybe. It was not the right um, you know, experimental condition to support this kind of connection. So it was not the right condition, not the right experiment to state that this was a direct interaction and this should be changed to indirect interaction. So uh, there was almost there was more than 9,000 um, votes in the second session. And in addition to that, there were a number of new edges and new nodes added to different networks. So and um, the main um, kind of benefit is that all that was added not by a um, group of a small group of a trained curators but people who actually work in this field 
Uh, they do this for a living. They uh, they work in the biology of macrophages, on the biology of neutrophils, and, and they just remember it off the top of their head. And we had some people that came to Jamboree and they were just rattling out all these networks like in the discussion saying, oh, this goes here and this goes there. Like they just keep it on the top of their head. Um, professional curators are great in curating literature and they train in curating literature and they have background in general biology and um, in some specific fields usually. Uh, the using crowd really helps to bring uh, expertise from people who are experts in that, those specific fields. Okay. And uh, another benefit is this great website where these um, updated models have been posted and they are available. And I'll show this website as well. Screenshots don't do it justice. Okay, so you can search for a network or you can just search for a gene. Okay, neutrophil signaling network. Okay, so this is the after. Um, kind of picture of this network and uh, this is before looks a little bit like a hairball but you ha can toggle belt so it will be a little bit more uh, clear how the network looks like and what I like is when you click on something you get this 3D effect since I'm moving. Keeps your attention focused. Okay, so you can download them and you can um, use them for your own purposes. So these networks are avail avail available. There were challenges. So the, the first challenge that we um, came across was recruitment. It was not easy to recruit people and uh, this approach, um, ambassador approach or evangelist approach has turned out to be the most effective way of recruiting people. And in the second round, there were more ambassadors that were participated in the first round, but then um, you know, they have learned the truth and they went to um, spread it to, to, to the community. Um, the other challenge was um, proficiency, bell proficiency. Even though we have trained um, uh, the contributors, but still we had to verify all of the statements and um, there was a, a professional group of curators that were doing that. Uh, so, and that brings me to that, um, what's next for Bell, that um, we were discussing earlier. And I think another thing that can be next for Bell is it has to be part of a curriculum. Um, we have to teach it to students and when they learn it, then they can use it in their research. And uh, at the part of this um, verification challenge, we had um, two, of experiences. Uh, so in the first round um, we had uh, students from uh, Toledo University. They were uh, graduate students in the BREAM, BREAM program. It's a uh, biomarker research for individualized medicine. BREAM for short, individualized is the same as personalized. Uh, and uh, we had two classes with them and, and after that they went in and they looked at the networks, they look, um, got papers, uh, reviewed the evidence, and then they wrote reports on uh, why they would vote for or against the evidence. And in the second challenge, uh, one of the um, 
top performer from the f first challenge, uh, Norberto Diaz Diaz. He is, he is a professor at the university in Seville uh, he, he, in the bioinformatics department. So he was then um, teaching well to his students and then they have joined in the second challenge and most of the top perf performers in this second challenge were from that university. So teaching bell would be great somehow. So crowdsourcing is not free sourcing. It took a lot of effort from a, a number of different people to, to make this happen. So this photograph here, see these people that are holding this um, awards, top performer recognition, these people, and then the rest of the people who doesn't have anything um, that the support people. So there's this top performers and that all of the support people who have supported all this great challenge. So, um, and this is me, I'm specifically wearing the same top. <laughs> I specifically found it in my closet. Um, so the sponsor um, and uh, the organizer, there was quite a few people from um, PMI team who has um, organized this and then uh, there were people from ADS uh, and Selma who has built the framework and then there were people from IBM in the first round of this challenge who were doing marketing and, and also help with organization and of course a lot of people from Solventa, the original developers of Bell and um, original developers of the first initial models. So crowdsourcing is not free sourcing but it, it does have great benefits and, and you can use Bell and, and it's the I think it, the most um, appropriate tool, the most easy to use kind of uh, network language that can be taught to people who are not experts in um, programming. Clairvoyant analytics. So if anyone decides to do any challenge like that, we are there to help. As I have mentioned, we are fluent in Bell now, and uh, Julia will talk about one of our projects. And uh, um, that would be great to have another project like that at some point. Maybe organized by foundation. Okay, and now I can take some questions. Excellence at your service, this is our new motto.